life forms should have the same right to exist within their natural capacities to survive. I wouldn't want to live in a world without trees and frogs and birds and goldfish and lady beetles and rattlesnakes. That whole biology of this animal is fascinating and after 40 years, I finally published all the work that I've done on this animal in a book I'm very proud of called Diamonds in the Rough. We're in the Apalachicola National Forest with Bruce Means and an iconic animal of the longleaf pine ecosystem. The story of Bruce and his favorite animal begins miles north of here. I started studying these animals in 1976, formally, when I was at Tall Timbers Research Station. I got into the scientific literature and discovered there was almost nothing known about this fabulous animal's biology. So up there I had a large acreage where the rattlesnakes seemed to be abundant. So I put radio transmitters in them. That led to many years of basically appreciating through their life history the wonderful things that they do and are all about. Normally, they lie coiled in nature and are very well camouflaged in the grass and other herbaceous litter that they live in. They're hidden and you're in nature and you almost never know they're close by. When you frighten one by coming upon it as I have here, and it, it, it goes from being very complacent and hiding into its Mr. Hyde transformation. And so they go into a coil, they rattle, they flatten themselves, and they will strike if you get close, close enough. The forest hides a lot of life you'd never see unless you looked for it. I think there's a scorpion here. Where'd he go? He's in there somewhere. There he is. See that little scorpion? If you're doing as I do, you like to look into tortoise burrows to see if there's a tortoise or a rattlesnake or one of many other animals that live in there. At this time of year, you have to be very careful because rattlesnakes will come up and they'll coil up in a clump of vegetation right near the burrow to warm up, but stay close to the burrow. Gopher tortoise burrows are an important shelter for many animals. The average burrow in a sandhill habitat like this is about 25 feet long. So I'm gonna step that off so you have an idea of how big that is. This is about 25 feet. Other important shelters are less obvious. Ha <laughs> here's what I'm talking about. You have no idea what a fabulous story this sort of a stump is. This is a, a longleaf pine that was weakened and thrown by the wind fires and animals have worked their way down into the ground along this softer sapwood. Now look at this. Look how far I can get in there. I can go way down in there and really soft and ah! oh! Oh! <laughs> I love to do that with groups. <laughs> In studies I did using radio telemetry with the eastern diamondback, it turns out this kind of habitat is far more important for the biology of a site like this, a longleaf pine com community, than the tortoise burrow refugium is. The eastern diamondback makes its home in the longleaf ecosystem because there are so many species of animal here for it to eat. Those plants eating animals are here for a similar reason. The herbaceous ground cover is really fantastic and in a two and a half acre block, say a, what's called a hectare, you can get up to 150 species of plants. So <laughs> this is one of our nation's most important environments. Longleaf forests only cover about 2% of their historic range. However, our area is a stronghold for this biodiverse, fire dependent habitat. I'm lucky to have lived in Tallahassee for more than half a century and part of the reason I've stayed here all these years is because of this national forest and then St. Mark's Wildlife Refuge and other blocks of publicly owned lands. Just think about this. It's in an environment in which a species has evolved and to which it is best adapted that you will be able to learn anything about the basic ecology of those species, whether it be the eastern diamondback, the wiregrass, the turkey oak, or the longleaf pine. <laughs> if you try to study an animal or a plant in a human-created environment, you're not going to learn everything about that animal's basic biology. So habitats like this 
let alone their beauty and all kinds of other wonderful things about them, it's the, their value to our knowledge and understanding uh, of nature and also they're a repository of the biodiversity that once was. In North Florida, these habitats and their residents are only a short drive away. For WFSU, I'm Rob Diaz de Villegas.